Ever heard of the Mary Rogers case? It's a story that will grip you. A young woman, a city in fear, and a chilling mystery left unsolved. Come, let's step back in time and uncover this tale that's been lost in the shadows of history. Now, as we prepare to dive into our story, make sure you're comfortable. Are you ready? It's story time. In the bustling metropolis of New York, amid the frantic rhythm of horse-drawn carriages and boisterous street vendors, a tale as old as time unfolds. Our story centers around the beautiful cigar girl, Mary Rogers, a vision of grace in the city's grime, her charm an oasis in the urban desert. Mary's fiancé, Daniel Payne, stands as a stark contrast to her allure. A man of simple pleasures and predictable habits, his love for Mary was as much a part of him as his broad shoulders and tired eyes. Their relationship on the surface mirrored the typical engagements of the era, respectful, warm, laced with the promise of a serene domestic life. However, as the saying goes, still waters run deep. Beneath their placid exterior, waves of tension were beginning to form. A lingering glance held too long, a dismissive wave of the hand, the strains of their relationship were visible to the keen observer. The era they inhabited further added layers to their dynamic. Victorian morals cast long shadows over personal desires, societal norms dictating the rhythm of their lives. Their engagement was not merely a contract of love, but a binding social expectation, a path predestined by their place in society. Yet, in the midst of this societal pressure and personal turbulence, a third character silently etched himself into the fabric of their lives. The city held its breath as the first act of this urban tragedy was set to begin. Against the rough backdrop of the city, John Anderson's tobacco shop was a beacon of refinement and allure. The air inside was thick with exotic tobacco smoke, making the world outside seem almost ethereal. At the center of it all, Mary, in her pristine white apron, navigated through the haze with an elegant ease. Her presence brought a certain energy to the shop. Each customer, from the burly dock workers to the refined gentlemen of society, admired her beauty. Laughter was a bit louder, smiles a bit wider, the atmosphere more vibrant in her company. But there was one figure who always stood apart, a silhouette cut from a different cloth. He was a gentleman of a certain age, not too old, but aged enough to carry an air of mystery around him. He was a frequent visitor, always choosing the same corner of the shop, always buying the same brand of cigars. His presence was subtle, yet there was a quiet persistence about him. His eyes often found Mary in the crowd, watching her with a quiet intensity that one might miss unless they were looking closely. His was not the crude stare of an uncouth admirer, but the fascinated gaze of someone seeing beauty in its raw, unfiltered form. As the days turned into weeks, his presence became a constant, his solitude a silent testament to his interest in Mary. But was it admiration or the beginning of something more sinister? The shop's walls held their secrets close, the wisps of cigar smoke dancing around the mystery. As time pressed forward, so too did the mysterious gentleman's silent adoration. Mary, despite being the object of many men's affections, couldn't shake off a feeling of intrigue that clung to the gentleman. The city outside might have been noisy and chaotic, but inside the shop, in those stolen glances, there was a different sort of clamor, one that resonated within Mary, causing a flutter of anticipation each time the bell over the door rang, announcing a new visitor. Every time it was him, she felt a strange sense of familiarity, as if she was meeting an old friend. Yet their conversations were limited to the exchange of pleasantries and his cigar preferences. Despite the silence, an unspoken connection seemed to simmer between them, a shared secret that neither dared to voice. Her admirers often flocked around her, their words vying for her attention. Yet the gentleman was different. He never spoke more than necessary, his comments always precise, often laced with an undercurrent of humor that seemed exclusively for Mary. These interactions, brief as they were, set her heart aflutter, a strange sensation she couldn't quite understand. 
As Mary continued to balance between her obligations towards Daniel and this enigmatic figure's compelling presence, her world became a stage for a quietly unfolding drama. The shop's murky corners held whispers of secrets, and the silence between the lines of their conversations was growing louder with each passing day. Meanwhile, the unseen puppeteer controlling their destinies prepared to cut the strings, pushing them into a dance of fate, a dance that would soon cast a long, ominous shadow over their lives. Despite his seemingly unwavering composure, Daniel was not oblivious to the growing tension. He had noticed the stranger, his persistence, and the subtle yet constant attention towards Mary. At first, he dismissed it as a harmless admiration. After all, Mary was used to having admirers. But as days turned into weeks, a creeping unease began to set in. His nights were no longer filled with peaceful dreams, but restless worry. The shared laughter, the lingering glances, and the odd connection between Mary and the gentleman gnawed at him. It was as if a part of their lives, their relationship, was slowly being drawn into the shadows. Finally, one day, driven by a mix of fear and frustration, Daniel decided to confront the gentleman. He strode into the shop, his usual friendly demeanor replaced by a mask of stern resolve. His entrance was unnoticed, swallowed by the haze of smoke and chatter. He stood there, a silent specter waiting for the right moment. But as he looked at Mary, radiant in her world, a world that now included this mysterious stranger, he hesitated. He saw the joy in her eyes, the same joy that used to be for him. Could he confront her and possibly disrupt this newfound happiness of hers? A happiness that he, despite his love, couldn't seem to provide. So he retreated, an unseen ghost, carrying the weight of unspoken words and the burden of a painful truth. That night, under the silver glow of the moon, a decision was made, a path chosen. Little did they know, their lives were about to take a tragic turn. In the growing gray light of dawn, Daniel Payne stirred in his bed, the silhouettes of familiar objects around him coming into sharp focus. His sleep-clouded mind struggled to wake, but his attention was already magnetically pulled towards the empty side of the bed, still bearing the lingering warmth of another. The absence of Mary was like a physical ache, a gnawing void that echoed with his growing fear. The woman he knew, the woman he had planned to wed, was slipping away from him. An undercurrent of change had stealthily crept into their lives. Mary, once full of life and engaging, was now often distant, her sparkling eyes clouded with unshared thoughts. Her absences grew in frequency, unexplained and often shrouded in a sudden urgency. Just a small errand, Daniel, she would say, a forced smile playing on her lips. But her eyes, her eyes spoke a different story, a story Daniel was becoming increasingly afraid to decipher. Daniel would often catch her, her gaze lingering in the distance, lost in thoughts that she was reluctant to share. It was as if she was living in a world that he could not access, a world that was slowly consuming the woman he loved. The pattern was growing, a terrible design that he could no longer ignore. At first, Daniel attributed the change to stress or fatigue, a temporary phase that would pass. But as the days turned into weeks, the change did not revert. Instead, it evolved, cementing itself into their everyday lives, a silent specter that refused to leave. The man who once had answers now only had questions. The woman who was his life was now becoming a mystery, and Daniel Payne, torn between love and dread, could only watch as the woman he loved turned into a stranger in their shared abode. Accidents, they often lead to some of the most earth-shattering revelations. Daniel had never been one to snoop, respecting the personal space and secrets of others. But that day, he wasn't prepared for what a simple accident would uncover. A letter, fallen and forgotten under the cabinet, slipped out unnoticed as he cleaned. The writing, though elegant, bore an unfamiliar slant. His eyes scanned the contents, a cold dread creeping up his spine as the words spilled their secrets. Sweet nothings, promises of clandestine meetings, and a signature that was not his. His mind reeled, 
the implications of the letter turning his world upside down. Each sentence was a dagger, every sweet promise a betrayal. His mind went back to the distant gazes, the sudden errands, the transformation of Mary. He was merely connecting the dots that had already been laid out for him. As the pieces fell into place, the image that formed was one that chilled him to his core. The letter, though devoid of a name, bore a description of a man that Daniel found hauntingly familiar. The stranger, the regular customer, the admirer at the tobacco shop. The realization hit him like a punch to the gut. Mary, his Mary, was seeing another man. The world around him spun out of control, the love letter clutched in his trembling hand an ugly testament to his crumbling reality. Denial, anger, desperation, a whirlpool of emotions consumed him. His mind refused to accept it, but the evidence was stark and staring back at him from the piece of paper. Betrayal has a cruel way of reshaping a person's world, making demons out of the shadows. His once peaceful home now felt like a house of lies, every corner whispering tales of Mary's betrayal. His heart echoed with a hollow pain, the woman he loved slipping away from him, her heart given to a stranger. Caught in the throes of an all-consuming jealousy, Daniel felt his world narrowing to a single point, the man, the stranger who had stolen away his love, an unfamiliar wrath simmered within him, distorting his once placid nature. Each night, Mary's laughter echoed in his ears, her image haunted his dreams, and the stranger's silhouette loomed in his mind's eye. He knew he couldn't just sit idle and let this transpire. A plan started forming in his mind, fueled by a desire for truth and revenge. One night, just as the city was wrapping itself in darkness, Daniel chose to take matters into his own hands. He followed Mary, maintaining a careful distance, ensuring he stayed out of sight. He watched her from afar. The sight of her lighting up in the presence of that stranger felt like a stab to his heart. But he didn't waver, didn't confront her just yet. He had to know more, had to understand what drew her away from him. As the night deepened, he followed her through winding streets, dimly lit alleyways until they reached a nondescript pub. A hotbed of locals, sailors, and characters of all sorts, the place was teeming with life. His heart pounded against his chest as he saw her disappear into the pub. Making up his mind, he adjusted his hat, took a deep breath, and pushed open the doors. Inside, the pub was ablaze with raucous laughter and the clinking of beer mugs, the air heavy with the scent of tobacco smoke and spirits. His eyes scanned the room, settling finally on the corner table where Mary was perched, lost in an intimate conversation with the gentleman from the cigar shop. The sight of them together, the reality of his fears personified, was a gut punch that left him breathless. His grip tightened around the hat he was holding, knuckles white against the dark fabric. There they were, oblivious to his presence, their eyes locked, their smiles easy. The gentleman's hand hovered over Mary's, their fingers almost touching, a gesture too familiar, too intimate for him to bear. Every muscle in his body screamed for him to storm over, to break them apart, but he stood rooted to his spot, feeling the pain, the betrayal, the helplessness wash over him. He watched as they stood, Mary's laughter echoing through the din, ricocheting off the walls and stabbing at his heart. The gentleman offered his arm and she took it, their bodies close, comfortable. They moved towards the exit, their departure a crushing finality to the evening's revelations. All he could do was watch as they disappeared into the cool night, leaving him behind in the noise and chaos of the pub, a silent spectator to his own heartbreak. As the door closed behind them, Daniel felt a shift within him. He was not just an abandoned lover anymore. He was a man wronged, a man incensed, a man thirsty for answers and justice. The seeds of suspicion had grown into a bitter reality, and as he stepped out into the night, he promised himself he would confront it. In the gloomy labyrinth of the city, Daniel found himself immersed in shadows, stalking two silhouettes that were etched against the dimly lit backdrop. His heart pounded with each step they took, the echoes of their footfalls intertwining with his own forming a twisted symphony of suspicion and apprehension. 
He watched as Mary, his Mary, strolled arm in arm with the gentlemen, their laughter slicing through the city's melancholy hum. The cityscape itself seemed to mirror Daniel's state of mind, its brooding structures casting long, looming shadows that danced and swirled around him. The stone and brick edifices stood like silent spectators, their hollow windows reflecting the scant moonlight, mirroring the cold void that was beginning to gnaw at his insides. The labyrinthine alleys, a convoluted mesh of desolation and mystery, matched the turmoil in his heart. He tread carefully, his senses heightened, his eyes never leaving the pair who were now just outlines, flickering in the sparse lamplight. The city's melancholy silence began to weigh upon Daniel, its soundlessness punctuated only by distant murmurs and the sharp rhythm of his own accelerating heartbeat. He trailed Mary and the gentleman to a secluded park where shadows seemed to coalesce and breathe, hiding and revealing under the treacherous dance of the moonlight. The twisted branches of the trees clawed at the velvet sky, their silhouettes a grim gallery of spectators to the unfolding drama. The couple paused at the park's heart, their forms barely visible in the dim light. Their words were hushed whispers carried away by the gentle wind, leaving Daniel straining to decipher the tone of their conversation. Then a laugh, Mary's laugh. It pierced the silence, causing his heart to clench in a bittersweet agony. He recalled that laugh, once his comfort, now a jarring note in his symphony of despair. Through the veils of shadow, he could make out their silhouettes drawing closer together. An intimate moment, their bodies colliding briefly before separating. His breath hitched. His Mary, once his solace, was now a stranger in the arms of another man. But then they parted. A quick kiss to her hand from the gentleman, a soft giggle from her, and the man departed, leaving Mary alone in the heart of the park. Daniel emerged from the comforting embrace of the shadows, his face ghostly pale under the moody moonlight. As he approached Mary, the looming silhouette of the Hudson River swelled in his peripheral vision, a black canvas rippling with the reflections of a distant, indifferent city. The sound of gently lapping water merged with his heartbeat in a haunting rhythm. As he drew closer, he saw her, still unsuspecting, her laughter dying out in the silent night. His heart hammered against his chest as if seeking escape. He was now but a phantom, a silent specter driven by torment and suspicion, about to shatter the serene tableau. Mary, he finally uttered, his voice thick with an emotion he couldn't name. She turned, her eyes wide and innocent in the soft glow of the moon. Her face held a surprise, swiftly replaced by an unspoken question, her lips parting slightly in silent response to his presence. There was a tense silence as their eyes met. A silence that seemed to absorb the city's distant hum, the lapping of the river's waves, even the whispering wind. A silence as deep and wide as the chasm that had grown between them. Their words crashed against each other like tempest-tossed waves against a rocky shore. Mary was defiant, indignant. Daniel, tormented and impassioned, their conversation was a series of accusations and denials, the air growing thick with the chill of their unfolding drama. Why, Daniel? Mary implored, her voice quivering with a mix of anger and sadness. Why can't you trust me? Her question lingered in the air, her words echoing into the emptiness of the night. Daniel, wrought with desperation, sought words that would convey his torment, his disappointment. But all that came out was a hollow whisper of disbelief. As the words hung heavy between them, the city watched on, a mute spectator to their unraveling lives. The Hudson lapped at their feet, whispering secrets only the river knew, mirroring the moon's pensive glow. The confrontation reached its zenith, emotions raw and exposed. There was no turning back now. The course of their fates had shifted dramatically and irrevocably on this night of shadows. The curtain fell on chapter three, leaving behind a chilling sense of foreboding as Mary and Daniel stood at the precipice of a fateful abyss. The frigid air by the Hudson River bore the tension of two hearts at war, their breaths dancing in the cold winter night, their words piercing the silence, 
Daniel and Mary stood on the precipice of a confrontation that had been brewing for a long time. Who is he, Mary? Daniel's voice was ragged, trembling with betrayal. His eyes, usually full of admiration for Mary, were now clouded with anger and distrust. Mary, however, remained resolute under his stern gaze. Her delicate face was etched with lines of concern and sadness, but she stood her ground, her eyes refusing to betray the man who had gifted her the locket. Who he is doesn't matter, Daniel. He is not you, she replied, her voice as cold as the Hudson itself. The words hung in the air between them, a sharp icicle of truth. Daniel's eyes darkened, his fists clenched. The pain of her betrayal turned into a consuming rage. His breathing became ragged, his mind clouded by images of Mary and the unknown gentleman. In a sudden fit of uncontrollable anger, Daniel lunged at Mary. His hands, once gentle, now became the instruments of his fury. They found their way around Mary's slender neck, squeezing the life out of the woman he had once loved. Her struggle was futile against the brute strength of a man scorned. As the life slowly drained from her eyes, Mary could only look into Daniel's face, a mirror of shock, anger, and a terrible regret. With a final shudder, Mary's body fell limp. The shiny locket that had previously been secured around her neck slipped from her grasp, plummeting towards the icy waters of the Hudson. The moonlight caught on the ornate metalwork, causing it to glint for a brief moment before disappearing beneath the dark surface with a muted splash. As the echoes of the splash faded, the night returned to its dreadful silence. The only sounds were the gentle lap of the river's waves against the shore and Daniel's labored breathing. He was alone, the gravity of his actions sinking in as he stared at the lifeless form of Mary. A gust of wind blew through the quiet riverside, carrying with it the cold sting of reality. It rustled the fallen leaves, swept over the discarded locket, and brushed against Daniel's pale face. It seemed to whisper the ghastly truth of his deed, causing him to flinch and retreat back from the body. He glanced around the deserted riverbank, the eerie silence amplifying the thrumming of his heartbeat. For a moment, he looked down at his hands, the hands that had taken a life, and a chilling dread seeped into his bones. He couldn't stay there. Not with her, not with the evidence of his heinous act. Without another look at Mary, he turned and fled into the shadows of the city, leaving behind the tragic tableau at the river's edge. The morning sun rose over the city, casting a harsh light on the lifeless form by the Hudson. A pair of early morning joggers, their breath visible in the chill air, stumbled upon the grim sight, and a horrified gasp echoed in the stillness. The city that had been a silent accomplice to the crime the night before was now awake, confronted with the evidence of its complicity. The news spread like wildfire, and soon the riverbank was teeming with law enforcement officers, journalists, and curious onlookers, all drawn to the spectacle. The yellow crime scene tape formed a stark contrast against the natural serenity of the riverside, and as investigators worked meticulously, murmurs of shock and speculation circulated among the gathered crowd. Simultaneously, across town, Daniel lay in his dimly lit room, the events of the previous night playing in a loop in his mind. The sight of Mary's body, the feel of her pulse fading, the shiny locket sinking into the river's depth, it all seemed like a nightmare. Yet the echo of her last breath was too real, too chilling to be an illusion. He shuddered, an unfamiliar feeling of fear enveloping him. In the following days, Mary's death was splashed across newspapers, the headlines blaring with the gruesome details and the shock of such a crime. The bustling city of New York, always so full of life, was temporarily muted by the sheer horror of the events. In every corner, whispered discussions revolved around the tragedy and the woman whose life had been brutally snuffed out. The police were relentless in their pursuit of the murderer, but no lead seemed to bring them any closer to the culprit. The only clue left behind, a small indent in the mud by the riverside, indicating where a piece of jewelry might have fallen, led to nothing more than speculative dead ends. Meanwhile, Daniel walked among the citizens of the city, 
his guilt hidden beneath a mask of indifference. He watched from a distance as the city mourned the loss of Mary, her story becoming a morbid fascination. Yet, within his heart, a torment raged, a heavy mixture of guilt, fear, and a melancholic longing for what once was. Years passed, and Mary's story faded into the annals of the city's history, her death becoming a grim legend whispered in hushed tones. As for Daniel, he remained within the city's confines, a silent ghost tormented by his past. His secret remained buried deep within him, as the Hudson River carried away the last tangible evidence of his crime, leaving behind a chilling tale of love, jealousy, and a murder most foul. As our story comes to a close, let the lull of this soothing ambiance continue to cradle you further into your journey of calmness and rest. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your relaxation and sleep routine tonight. Remember, each day brings a new story, and each night brings a fresh chance to regenerate, to dream, and to become more of who you are. Good night, dear listener, until our next story, sleep well and dream beautifully. <laughs>